Hi, guitar friends again. Uh, last time we talked about added note chords, and we'll talk more about that, including fingerings, but right now I wanted to talk about just voicing seventh chords in general. Now, if you've studied a little bit of jazz guitar, um, you probably know certain voicings on certain sets of strings. For example, uh, like an F major 7 on the kind of first split set of strings, which would be the 6th, 4th, 3rd, and 2nd, starting with the voicing of root 7, 3, 5, and just move it up in inversion so that you've got root position, first inversion meaning the 3rd is in the bass, then is in the bass, the seventh is in the bass, all moving along the same same set of strings here. And of course you can do that on the next split set, which would be the fifth, third, second, and first string. Say if we started with uh, a C major seven here. Now normally for people that play with a pick, it's fingered like this. If you're playing with your fingers of your right hand like I am, you can actually just bar it. There's nothing to silence because you're plucking only the notes that you want here. Etc. And then you've got the um, contiguous groups of strings, the low set, middle set, high set, and you know, you can go right across with the same voicing, this would be root 5, 7, 3, A major 7, root 5, 7, 3 in the middle set of strings, D major 7, root 5, 7, 3 on the high set of strings, which is a G major 7, and then you can make this into any chord quality you want, make it into a G7, G minor 7, G minor 7, G minor 7, 5, to minor 7, etc. Um, including um, things like G major 7, sharp 5. But I think what's overlooked is some really uh, intriguing colors in terms of voicings where you can have um, very strident intervals like you can have a fifth on the low two strings, in this case an A and an E, and a fifth on the high two strings, in this case an F and a C, and that's actually a voicing of an F major seventh chord. Um, and uh, in this case on the low two strings it's three seven on the high strings it's root five. But you've got these two fifths separated by quite a distance. And to play that as an F major 7 is a pretty novel color. So in the same way that we learn all the voicings, um, the root in the bass, third in the bass, fifth in the bass, seventh in the bass, I would suggest doing the same thing with a voicing like that. Um, but maybe the most important thing I want to talk about today is how to just use the four voices and yet still have upper voices implied. Um, now if you've got, let's use the same voicing which is first split set of strings, root, seven, three, five. to an A. Again, I'm holding it in the same way you hold it if you're using a pick, but if you're not using a pick, you can just bar across the fifth fret here so that you're holding the A and the E under your first finger, and then grabbing the G sharp and the C sharp, which of course frees this finger. Now in that case, if you want to add a 9 on, you just add a B, which you can grab right there. But that's not possible with uh, most voicings, other voicings. Um, 
and the usual uh, way of getting a ninth on a chord is to raise the root, and then you're just omitting the root. Um, now the problem with that, when a chord like this, that the, root, the ninth is in the bass. And it um, doesn't give you that the gravity of a major seventh chord right there. Um, so if possible, you want to grab it somewhere else. Like here. Sometimes, if you use open strings, in this case, very lucky because if I drop that E with my middle finger to the open B and play the A, G sharp, C sharp, the open B, you got it right there and you've got that little beautiful twanginess of the guitar with an open string with the C sharp and the B next to each other. Um, but with major seventh chords, root position, um, Something else you can do is kind of switch the voices around so that we lose the fifth, which is the E, the highest note, root seven, three, five. We lower the third, our C sharp here, down to a second. Grab that C sharp, grab the A, there's the nine right there, and then we'll get grab the third down here. That's something that will you'll run into with other kinds of um, root position chords. Like if we turn this into this is the most common fingering for that same set of strings, same voicing, but a minor seventh with the middle finger on A, third finger on G, C, E. Now that of course is for the benefit of pick play. So you can kind of silence the fifth string. Of course, if you're playing with uh, your fingers, you have an opportunity to just completely bar across there and grab just the notes you want. In that case, it's very easy to get a, a B up there. Um, something else you can do with this voicing is you can grab the ninth up here, a B up here. lost your seventh, you don't need the E, so we'll move the E up to the seventh G there, and this is a A, a, a minor nine. Oops, <laughs> I got a band-aid on my finger there. A minor nine. So when it comes to root position chords, you want to add a nine, you just kind of have to find it somewhere. Replace another note, find that same note that you replaced, unless it's the fifth, somewhere else. Um, now, if you have a chord like uh, a fourth inversion major seventh in the same general area, but on the high four strings, so that would be like fourth inversion has the seventh is the lowest note. So you have G sharp, G sharp, C sharp, E and A. Then you can just follow the the, the idea of moving the root up to a nine, and you've just got there and there. So. An A major nine, uh, sans root, but uh, that'll give you the feeling of a major chord uh, with the added voices. When it comes to elevenths and thirteenths, uh, they're in the vicinity of the fifth, and the fifth we can always omit the way um, we're told the harmonic series works, um, and you can hear it in various things, including in nature, is that when you hit a note, you listen closely enough, you can hear it's the harmonic of its fifth, actually it would be more, more like that one first, and uh, so that's implied already, so you don't necessarily need to keep the fifth in the chord, the fifth is a, is a, is a, is a kind of balancing color. Um, but you still get the meaning of an A major 7 without playing the 5th. Now, of course, then it can be a melodic element, but that's a different story. So what we do is we take the 5th, and if we 
1 and 11, just adding the 4th to um, an A major 7th chord. Now this is kind of a rare voicing. People are um, uncomfortable using it because you've got that playing the 3rd um, and the 4th next to each other. There's ways of voicing the chord that you can make that less dissonant sounding. But of course you might want specifically that sound. What's more common is the chord taken from the 4th mode of the major scale, Lydian mode, which would be the sharp 11. So that's just lowering the 5th one fret. And of course you have to switch your fingers around and pick up the, note, the other notes, the root 7 and 3. So in A major 7 sharp 11 is simply keep, keeping to 4 notes, lowering the 5th. Uh, uh, chord that has become much, much, much more common in the last uh, part of the 20th century and the early part of the 21st century in jazz is a major 7 sharp 5 chord. Um, so obviously that's just a matter of raising the 5th, in this case to an E sharp, of course it's an F, and harmonically, but technically it's an E sharp, so raised 5th in A. Coming from the F sharp melodic minor scale, the, the third mode, which is known as Lydian augmented, as in or Lydian sharp five. Um, now that sharp five, depending on the harmonic environment, could be thought of as a flat six as well, because that's exactly what it is. It's a sixth note, which is F sharp flattened to and F natural. And then of course if you want to just add in um, the 6th, of course with the 7th there it makes it a 13, There's, all you have to do is move the 5th up a whole step. And you can do this in any voicing.